My name's Jonathan Falconer. I'm the Senior Commissioning Editor at Haynes Publishing for Military and Aviation Titles. My latest title is about the Supermarine S6B seaplane. Um, it's uh, a quite a remarkable story, in fact, that, uh, that covers the, the development of high-speed um, seaplane racing in the 1920s and 30s. The Schneider, the Schneider Trophy races were um, established in 1912 as a, as a competition for seaplanes. Um, it was essentially a speed competition, but as time wore on, it became very much a kind of a, a, a battle between national prides of um, Britain, uh, France, Italy and the United States as to who could outdo the other in terms of um, high speed developments of uh, seaplane races. You could call it uh, the Formula One of its day. It attracted huge crowds to the uh, the Solent on the uh, south of England, where the the races, the, the, or certainly the the British rounds of the races were were undertaken. Special trains were laid on from London, carrying tens of thousands of uh, eager spectators to line the seafronts at uh, South Sea, at Hailing Island, and all along that stretch of the uh, the Solent. They happened every two years from 1927. 1927, the contest was held in Venice, um, in Italy. 1929, it was held on uh, Southampton Water, along the Solent, and again in 1931 uh, on the Solent. And that was the year when Britain was, in fact, the only uh, country that fielded um, a team because the, uh, the Italian competition had actually dropped out due to technical um, issues, and uh, so had the French fallen by the wayside. So it was only the Brits that, uh, that, um, that flew to victory. <laughs> the the Essex, Supermarine S6B was the culmination of a uh, series of designs for uh, high-speed um, seaplane racers in the uh, 1920s and 30s. The S6, S6A and S6B were the aircraft which actually clinched the um, coveted Schneider Trophy uh, for Britain in 1931. Uh, the S6B was the, the ultimate aircraft in the, uh, in the range that was developed by uh, Reginald Mitchell, who went on to design the legendary Spitfire five years later. It was a combination of um, uh, design uh, refinements that had been achieved over uh, a period of um, time, uh, which had been learned from previous uh, competitions um, in the Schneider Trophy series, um, allied with some developments, significant developments, in fact, by Rolls-Royce, the um, engine builder, uh, with their Rolls-Royce R sprint engine. In, uh, in 1929, with the Wall Street crash, the, the world was, Western world was plunged into financial uncertainty. And in much the same way as we're living in the age of austerity today, um, the British government at the time said to the air ministry, we're not going to bankroll you anymore for the, uh, the paying for the, uh, the high-speed flight, RAF high-speed flight, who operated the, uh, the racing seaplanes. So um, the air ministry basically wound up the, um, uh, their uh, involvement with the, the Schneider Trophy. And um, at the very last minute, when it looked as though Britain's chances of actually clinching this, uh, this prestigious title and trophy were going to be consigned to the, the, uh, the waste basket of history, uh, an heiress uh, by the name of Lady Houston from um, uh, the United States stepped in and uh, offered to um, bankroll the, uh, the whole... Um, uh, team and the whole competition to the tune of £100,000, which uh, in 1931 was uh, a not inconsiderable sum. Um, had it not been for Lady Houston's um, great um, philanthropic gesture here, um, who knows what might have happened. The, um, the, the contest, the Schneider Trophy contest, was held um, 12 times between 1913 and 1931. And the actual award of the prestigious trophy went to uh, the first team to gain three victories out of five consecutive contests. And Great Britain was that team in 1931. Well, the, the S6B was never used as a, a competition seaplane uh, again, but the, the spirit of the aircraft lived on in the uh, design of the Supermarine Spitfire 
which um, first flew in 1936, um, designed by Reginald Mitchell, um, Supermarine's chief designer, and the man who designed the uh, S6, S6A, S6B um, from the 1929 and 31 contests. The, um, the S6B uh, design influenced the, the future shape of the, uh, the, the Spitfire fighter um, through its uh, developments in airframe materials, airframe designs, and of course the development of um, engines capable of delivering much higher um, horsepower uh, outputs. Um, added to that was the development of oils, lubrication, uh, lubricating fluids, and um, fuels that were capable of um, being used at high speeds and high temperatures. Yeah, I've got a, a personal connection with the, um, the Schneider Trophy races um, in as much as my maternal grandfather was one of the founder members of the RAF High Speed Flight in 1927 um, when he was uh, a junior uh, fitter on the team and he travelled to Venice um, with the uh, high speed flight for the uh, the Italian round of the the contest, he was also involved in 1929 and 1931 contests. And um, one of his claims to fame was actually as a sideline um, uh, maintaining the uh, the the car of um, Sam Kinkhead, who was uh, one of the pilots on the team, but who sadly died in a uh, a practice crash before one of the races. There are two um, two surviving aircraft from the uh, the RAF Schneider Trophy team um, still in existence today. Um, the S6A N248, which took part in the 1929 contest, uh, can be seen at the Solent Sky Museum in Southampton. While if you go to London to the Science Museum at South Kensington, you will see uh, S6B S1595, which achieved the absolute world speed record of 407.5 miles per hour in 1931. You can get hold of copies of the Super Rolls-Royce Supermarine S6B manual via the Haynes uh, website, which is www.haynes.com.